dawn at the Masters. Everything is quiet now, but the stage is set for the greatest water skiers in the world. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Robin Lake at Callaway Gardens in Georgia. I'm Dan Debenham, along with former Masters champion Wayne Grimditch. And Wayne, you probably know as well as anyone that this is truly a magical place. It is magical, and it's also magnetic, because at this time of the year, every skier around the world wants to be here to compete. Drawn from all corners of the earth. Their common bond being that in the world of water skiing, there is no other tournament like the Masters. to mention in that open that the Masters also brings out the most enthusiastic crowds. Well, they are ready, and so are our competitors out there at the Pavilion. Well, our invited competitors, not everybody gets here. Qualifications are very difficult. You've got to be a Masters champion, a USO ch Open champion, world record holder, world champion, or on the top five of two different world lists. And that sounds easy, right? <laughs> I don't think so. So the competitors are ready. The next thing they'll do is hit Robin Lake where they'll have to face the memories of all the great champions out there as well as a very demanding course. That's right. And they have one defining goal in mind, and that is to become our next Masters champion. 36 years in the making, Wayne, one of the reasons everyone here today wants their name on the Masters trophy, wants their own Masters ring. Of course, the tradition was built by the all-time greats with skiers like Liz Allen, considered by many as the best woman skier ever. Michael Hazelwood captured four overall titles here, a mark that matched the great Chuck Stearns, taking a stroll down Robin Lake Beach in his polka dotted suit. And traditionally, Bo Calloway hands out the trophies to the overall champions. And there's a good look, Wayne, at a bearded Bob LaPointe. Of course, to each competitor here, the Masters means something different. It's three events, it's traditional. The fans, the media, the chase and the race. The prestige, the best in the world are invited here. Adrenaline, adrenaline, adrenaline. I would have to say the thrill of winning. It's amazing, just amazing. It, it's the champions tournament. It truly is, Wayne, taking a look at yesterday's skiers meeting. I mean, this looks like a who's who in the world today of water skiing. And you get a quick sense of the uh, focus these skiers have and the tension in the room starting to build. This is the day before and the eve of. And when we come back, we will begin our quest to find the next Masters Champion. At Correct Craft, the customer commands a lot of respect. That customer needs facts, not hype. We prove every day that a really good product will sell itself, but only if the customer has all the information. We'll show you what we've got and help you compare and let you make the decision. Because once you get behind the wheel of a Nautique, the selling stops and the performance starts. Nautiques by Correct Craft, the definition of quality. Call 1-800-346-2092. If you want it, we've got it now. Overton's has one of the largest inventories of water sports equipment in the world. When you shop at Overton's, you never have to leave your home. We have 24-hour Monday through Saturday customer service operators ready to take your orders. For a few dollars more, Overton's offers overnight delivery using Federal Express. From swimwear to boating accessories, knee boards to kid stuff, eyewear to skiing accessories, Overton's has it all. Call 1-800-328-1992 for a free catalog. And welcome back to a beautiful yeah. Masters three, three, here at Pine Mountain, Georgia. Callaway Gardens is the site. Dan Debenham along with Wayne Grimditch. And these are the Larson twins. 
I believe they're twins, or are we looking in a mirror here? Nope, definitely they're twins. Different color bathing suits. When you speak of the Larsons, you're talking about women's trick skiing. They are the best in the world. Sherry Sloan is one of many that has tried to emulate the Larsons over the years. Here's a good look at Sherry's run. This is what she did earlier in vying for the overall title here. Different rules this year in the Masters competition. They are taking the three top overall qualifiers from Saturday and letting them compete on Sunday but you have to take your Sunday score. So it's a whole, whole new ball game, and Sherry had some difficulty, as you notice here, stumbled up on a couple of tricks and ended up with only 31-30 in her trick performance. But keep in mind that she is in the run for that overall Masters title. Now, her biggest competition might be this young woman right here, Philippa Roberts from Great Britain. At 35 years of age, she is a senior member of the group here, and she used her experience to parlay herself a stand-up run in the trick skiing event. Not a terrific run, but solid enough at 3,600 points to give her the lead over Sherry Sloan. And so the race is on for that overall Masters title. Of course, still to come on the water, the domination factor of the twins, Britt and Ton Larson. And look at them focus. Here's a good look at Julie Scholl Petrus out of Independence, Missouri originally. Of course, most of these skiers now live in the Sunshine State of Florida. They work out there year round, most of them. And this is Julie's second pass. This is the toe pass. A lot of the skiers like to do the toe pass first. She reversed the order. She's pulling the rope in and out, doing a series of surface turns as well as wake turns. Now, the judges are looking to see whether these are done according to the rule book. And if they're not, then they don't get an autograph from me. That, that is you. That's Wayne. That's <laughs> Wayne. And that's a very young Britt and Ton Larson. And here they are today. Britt Larson on the water first. But where's the cowboy hat? You get extra credit if you wear the cowboy hat. How old does that make you? If they were that young? Britt Larson Great. doing what she Great. does so well. Of course, and that is dominating out on the water. Her opening pass, they get two 20-second passes in the event where they try to do as many tricks per second. Tom on the dock, applauding her efforts. Folks, since 1989, no one else has won this event but a Larson. My best memory is after five years at being in the Masters and five years of skiing terrible in the Masters, I finally, on, the, on Sunday, made my flip I stood up and I skied in and my sister was there smiling and crying for me because I had just won the Masters. Ah yes, that too is what the Masters is all about. Great Masters memories. All right, this is her second pass now. Once again, Britt Larson. Tawn Larson has won three titles. Britt has won the last two, the 93 and 94 champion, performing her hand pass, very elegant, right off the crest of the wake, getting great clearance, and that's what the judges are looking for. And if they complete the revolution, it ends with a flip that just hangs on, tucks it out, takes a lot of shock on the wake, but stands up. Wow, let's go ahead and take a look at that flip again as her sister, Tawn, gets set to ski. Here comes Britt Larson. She pops it, and she does just hang on, and she racks up 7,620 total points. And, of course, that vaults her immediately into the lead. She is the one to beat. And if anybody can beat her, it's her twin sister, Tawn. And here comes Tawn. Of course, originally the twins are out of Madison, Wisconsin, a great place for show skiing, and show skiing is all about all three disciplines of water skiing. And I think it's safe to say that trick skiing is the most challenging. These skiers have to spend hours behind the boat trying to perfect the necessary precision, skill, balance, timing to hang on just like she did and ski away. Well, there is a lot of experience on the part of Tom Larson. Her best master's moment? When you thought I won for the fourth time and you're saying, how does it feel to win for the fourth time? And we all looked at the board and Britt had won and that was such a great memory to have Britt win finally. Of course, Tom would like to make this Masters a memorable one. This is her second pass. Who better to call it than her twin sister, Britt. Take it away, Britt. Wake line five front, wake line O, oh, reverse. Wake back, wake seven back, back to back, reverse. Wake back to back, wake five front, back, Reverse wake five front, wake five back, front, wake five back, front, flip. Oh. Hey, Tom nails the flip. Nailed the play by play. I think you could be in trouble, buddy. Take a look again at the flip. That's big bonus points. Let's go to our winner with Wayne. Who won? <laughs> we did. <laughs> there we go. We've got the final results. Britt Larson, 76-20.
with Ton Larson 7500. <laughs> if I can intrude again, you know, this has been a very different year for both of you all because you don't train any longer. Ton, you're getting ready to be married in a month. And how has that really changed both of your practice habits and approach to the tournament? Well, we don't live together anymore, but it's changed my practice in that I'm trying to do three things all at once, and it's been difficult, but I've been skiing out at the McCormick's, and it's really been great out there to ski. How about you, Britt? Uh, looks like practice has served you well today. Congratulations, three in a row. Yeah, it feels fantastic. I, I really didn't know whether I was going to make it or not this this year because I'm a, I'm a second grade teacher for my first year, and I haven't been able to practice as, as much as I want, but it's all been so fantastic that... Well, I think you held up your end of the bargain. You gave everyone, once again, a great lesson in tricks. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good job. Take a back seat for the moment as we begin men's tricks. And we will see the best in the world, including Jarrett Llewellyn, who's in the run right now for the overall title with Amrick Bennett. We'll wait for them as we begin with Corey Picos. Now, he is one of the best in the world, in fact, many times over a Masters champion. Won his first title back in 1980, some 15 years ago, seven titles. He is one of the best ever, folks, a future Hall of Famer. He's quick, agile, strong. In years past, I've called him the Velociraptor, and he really is in the hunt today. Uh, maybe because he chews up the competition. <laughs> oh! Has a little trouble towards the end here. He falls. Now, that only means he loses that trick. You hear the horn signify the end of the 20 seconds. Amrick looking on. He's getting psyched because this event takes all your concentration, your experience. You've got to stay right on the mark. The hand pass, starting off with ski line maneuvers, throwing his whole body over the rope while turning anywhere from 180 to 543 turns. There are very, two very quick 720s, two full revolutions. Now, on to the flips. One, another one in the back in the opposite direction, and now one with a half a twist. Excellent. You hear the horn. He loses the last trick, but that's a solid run. Looks like maybe the judges took a few tricks away from him. Not an exceptional score, and I think uh, he's not going to be totally happy with that. 10,240 points. That certainly opens the proverbial door for Amrick Bennett. you got to believe that Bennett, out of Africa, believes that he's got a great opportunity here and can, in fact, win this competition. He's had some very close opportunities in years past. Really surprised the skiers and the judges last year on how well he had cleaned up his trick scheme, improved his technique, gotten better clearance, timing. A little off at this point, struggling to hang on, falls. Once again, loses that trick, but still have another 20 seconds left. As you can see he's shaking his head, not satisfied, poor opening pass. Jared Llewellyn from Canada, awaiting his turn here on Robin Lake. Amherd Bennett coming back with his second pass, his hand pass. 370 points behind Corey at this point. He's moving through some body overs. He'll do a 720 uh, coming up right now. Two full revolutions. Nicely done. And now moving on to four flips. There is one. That's two. He's got a backflip with a half twist. And now the reverse big time. Great job by Amrick Bennett. Let's go outside with Wayne Wood. You look strong on the second pass. How'd you feel? Um, I felt good. Really both passes. Um, I've been training behind a boat that has a little smaller wakes, so these wakes are a lot bigger. And it was giving me a little more slack. I didn't have as good rope control, and I wanted to go, but I just kind of had to wait on the rope. And I felt like uh, that was the difference between getting the last tricks or not. Well, here's Jared Llewellyn, who is battling right now with Patrice Martin for the overall title. To beat Patrice, you got to have a good run anyway. So um, that's what I'm shooting for. And he's on his way to a good run right now doing one flip, he has five scheduled, another with a half a twist, but the big one is a front flip coming up right here, taking it straight over the top, and he, oh, he just falls short on the rotation and can't pull himself up. 
And so Patrice Martin waiting on the dock knows that he has a great opportunity to not only possibly win this event, but vault into the lead in the overall title. Once again, Jarrett Llewellyn going down on a trick that was worth 800 points. And so here comes the Frenchman, Patrice Martin. One of the most elegant trick skiers in the world. You're going to see a good reason right here, right off the crest of the way. Great timing, waits for that rope to tighten up and it sends him right into the next trick. He wants to be in the lead here. He needs to be in the lead to have a shot at defending his overall title. He will only do one flip. We just saw it. He's going to now move into another series of body overs. He finishes standing up, but short. The judges have perhaps taken a few tricks away. He is well back of the lead and behind Jared Llewellyn. You did see a tie there between Corey Picos and Amrick Bennett. Of course, still to ski is this man, Tori Baggiano. Now, Tori has the ability and certainly the experience, including. Well, he's the defending champion here, and that says it all, Wayne. He has two Masters trick titles to his credit. He looks a little bit like elbows and knees everywhere, but he gets a lot of tricks done, and he does them well, getting great air as he throws himself all over the rope. He's fired up, finishes 40 points behind Corey and Amber. And so we will have a runoff, maybe a surprise for Tori. I think he thought he was in there, but we now have a runoff between Corey and Amrick. Let's go ahead and talk with Amrick first about his run. Well, I can't really do a composition. You know, you work hard on a certain way of skiing, and you just have to stick with it. You can do little combination, you know, little differences, but you have to stick pretty much with the same thing. First pass or second pass then? Second pass, of course, my end pass. The hand pass, of course, more risky because you're jumping over the rope to catch the ski. You're having to pass the handle behind your back while traveling very quickly and doing 720 degree rotation. The big key, of course, the four flicks. There's one, two, those are 500 points. Now 750 for the half twist, coming off the crest, pulling it, tucking it, and he catches and gets pulled down. So 5,140 total points, and now it's Corey Pickus' turn. What's going to be his strategy? I'm going to go with my hand pass, and uh, it's, it's worth more points, and see what I can do with it. Once again, the hand pass. Both decide that they will go with the hand pass. Will it pay off for Corey Pickles? Look how clean he is, just right off the crest of the way. Not moving much laterally, saving time. Beautiful 720s right there. Again, one flip. Another flip, he needs one. This could be the championship. He lands it. Horn hasn't blown yet, and he gets the helicopter. I think he got it all. We shall see for the official results. He's not even sure. And the results are in. Corey Pickus, by a total of 6,330 points on that runoff pass, picks up his eighth Masters title. There's a lot of highs and lows there in just a few uh, few minutes span. And uh, you go from thinking you won the event to uh, to a runoff. And uh, Emmerich is a, an excellent skier, and he's got a high point uh, second pass. I knew uh, my work was cut out for me, but uh, I couldn't be happy with the, with the way it ended. Next on Know It All, part 14 of Transportation, Mankind's Greatest Challenge. Dad, please change the channel. Introducing the latest evolution in transportation, car multimedia from Clarion. With LCD television and an in-dash cellular phone, which you control through a Clarion Pro Audio system, it will enable mankind to conquer even greater challenges. Are we there yet? Like family vacations. Clarion, car audio and beyond. Welcome back to the Masters, everybody. Dan Devenham along with Tony Finn now, which means, Tony, it's time for Wakeboard here at Robin Lake, the second time that we've had this at the Masters. Scott Byerly certainly knows how to electrify and excite the crowd. He is what we call big. Scott Byerly goes huge. That's a beautiful indie tantrum for Scott Byerly. Scott Byerly finished in second place last year at the Masters and has been performing great in contests. Ooh! But he goes down there, he goes down early, and you know what? I don't think that's going to be enough for Scott, considering how well everybody's been riding here at Robin Lake. This is Kobe Mikasich. You haven't heard a lot about him, but look for him in the future. Well, Kobe is originally from Sacramento, but he moved to Orlando. He's been training with some of the top pros, and it's really showing. He really looks like a very seasoned competitor. Carves hard right there for a fakey to fakey roll. And total score of over 17,000 points for Kobe. But that will not do it when you look at guys like Dean Lavelle out on the water right now. You like to call this guy the 10-event skier. 
I call him the ten event skier, and I also call him Clean D. His maneuvers are so clean. He's very stylish. Look at how big he's going on that sport antique wake. Nice, big front flip for Dean, landing way out there in the flat. Oh, and wow. the move is for Dean LaBelle. Oh, doctor, he's clean today. Scott Byer is going to have to walk back woefully to the dock as Dean LaBelle is just cleaning up right now. He certainly is cleaning up. That's why we call him clean, Dean LaBelle. Look at that grab tantrum. Nice how he puts that board into the fakie position. Fakie to fakie roll for Dean. An air back to front. He's got one more trick left. Can he nail it? Yes, the Mobius. And that was unbelievable. Over 20,000 points for Dean LaBelle. But if anybody can surpass that, the next two might. Shannon Best and, of course, Aaron Shapiro. Well, Shannon Best was not one of the seeded competitors. He actually had to qualify last week at the Last Chance Challenge. And boy, is he performing well on the water today. Shannon Best from Australia. He's on a long walk of that, I guess. But he's doing <laughs> a, a huge great. walk of that, but he's really turning some heads here. Boy, 20,000 points, but not enough to beat Dean LaBelle. Now, this guy, there on the Scud Shapiro, is going to have to have the run of his life if he's going to beat Dean LaBelle. And oh, 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 oh. Gigantic hoochie glide for Darren Shapiro. Now, now, why do they call him the Scud? Tony, you and I know, but explain it for our folks at home. Because when Darren goes up, you never know where he's gonna land. And he nails it with that Mobius. Oh my goodness! The runs today are the best I have ever seen, and I have seen a lot of wakeboarding. You know, you even saw the water skiers. Here's the Masters getting off on these runs. This is really a fun new sport. Here comes Shapiro. Well, everybody's getting off on wakeboarding, including Darren Shapiro. Big method front flip for Darren. Doing a great job, and Tony really a surprise because he struggled this season, but now he says he is back. Yeah, I feel like uh, with the help of my coaches, Chet Raley and Mike Ferraro, they've helped me come back to the way I used to be and to kick butt all over again this season. Well, Tony Finn, Darren Shapiro just kicked a little butt right here at the Masters. He's our winner in the wakeboarding, and he will be back in the slow competition. This is the Masters. We're back at Robin Lake. We want to quickly update you on the overall race for the women's Masters title. Sherry Sloan earlier skied six full buoys at 32 off, got one buoy at 35 off, and that sets her up in a big way against Philippa Roberts for that overall title, Wayne. Sherry, of course, behind after the trick skiing event, Philippa ahead, and Philippa needed to get well into the 35 off line length. That's a 40-foot rope. She got four buoys. Again, put her back in the lead where she needs to be because Sherry's specialty is the jumping. Philippa, of course, is a doctor back in Great Britain. How does she ever find the time to ski so well? A good look at Dina Mapple now. Earlier, we showed you Liz Allen at the beginning of the show, considered one of the best, if not the best, female skier in the world. Well, if there is any argument as to who's the best, it might be this woman, Dina Mapple. Just a host of victories to her credit, world titles, world records, eight Masters overall titles. What's your best memory of the Masters? Um, I have so many memories at the Masters, but I, I mean, all of them good. I think that the one that stands out the most is the 25th Masters. They invited um, all the past champions, and I got to meet a lot of champions that, hadn't won, that I hadn't met before who had won here. And then the night at the banquet, drinking champagne with Liz Allen Shedder. At the time, she was Liz Allen Shedder and Hal Northrop. And now our leaders in the women's slalom competition. We begin with Tony Neville out of Australia, here since 1992. She's 28 years old, and she's skiing extremely well this year. Seems to have picked up more upper body strength, hanging on to a lot of slack around number four, around number five, digs in deep, and just doesn't get her shoulders back in time. She ends up with four and a half buoys at 35 off. She would have liked to have run this pass. She really scrambled well, though. Gets in deep, kind of like Shea Lander there. Elbow in the water. Ski gets reared up on his edge and straightens out, goes towards the boat, and that ends her pass. Here is 25-year-old Christy Overton. She, of course, is the young hot gun out here in the women's world of water skiing. She is strong, and she is a proven winner. And way ahead in the race from buoy to buoy, if she gets all of number five, she will move into the lead, and she does. Maybe the easiest 35 off run we have seen ever on Robin Lake. Well, the fans love it, and Dad 
certainly appreciates it, getting a hug from Tori Baggiano's father. So I guess it's a winner's pedigree thing we got going on there on the dock. And so Christy comes back with the course record in mind. This is 38 off. Which she holds at three buoys at this line lane. Bear in mind, it was 10 years ago that she won her first event here at the Masters. That was a Trix title, and she successfully defended that. Here we go, around number three. She's tied the record. She moved. Can she get any part of four? She doesn't. She gets a half of it. Sets a new mark right here on Robin Lake. Three and a half buoys, and I tell you, that's going to put some serious pressure on one skier remaining, Jennifer Leachman. So a new course record for Christy Overton. We talked about her strength. She held on right there at three, crosses the wake, just can't get back from four. That's a big win. So you did wonderful. The Overtons, Parker and his daughter Christy, one of the strongest water skiing families out there. Christy Overton sets a new record here at Robin Lake, and she's with our own Wayne Brimdage. I have it all figured out. Uh, yesterday, you just took it easy, so you could be out early and break the course record and put a lot of pressure on the rest of the field. I wish you were right. <laughs> yesterday, I wanted to come in after 22, and today, I just wanted to be more aggressive. And I had nothing to lose because I skied so bad yesterday. I wanted to take the tailwind 35 to run 38. I mean, it was, it was nice. Nothing to lose and everything to win for Christy Overton, unless this woman, Jennifer Leachman, can better her new course record. Jennifer Leachman, 31 years old, just had a baby. Her name is Taylor. Jennifer back with almost a renewed, refreshing look at the competition. She's really skiing well. I wish she's had an excellent start this year. She is the top seed this afternoon, 35 feet off the 75-foot line, running a little late in the race from buoy to buoy. Notice the slack rope here. She hangs on, accelerates across, has to pull almost all the way to six. Not as smooth as what we saw from Christy Overton, but she gets all six buoys, so she'll move on. <laughs> and so the stage is set as Christy Overton and her husband, Tim, watch. Jennifer Leachman needs three and a half buoys to better the course record and pick up the win. Not a good start. She's going to be fast and narrow coming into two. Needs a big turn here, and she's not going to get it. A gritty performance for Jennifer Leachman, but it will not be enough. She finishes in second place, and so the day belongs to Christy Overton. She won last year, and she finishes in first place again. She is our winner in the women's slalom skiing here at the 36th Masters. Jennifer Leachman finishes in second place, followed by Tony Neville, and then Philippa Roberts. And when we come back, the men take the course here at Robin Lake. Stay with us. We are back, and we are set for the men's slalom here at Robin Lake, and that is the way that they will hit the water. Here's a look back at some of the earlier competition, including Jarrett Llewellyn, who is still in the hunt for that overall title, but disappointment here is he only got three buoys at 35 off. Here's Stefan Wild, 25 years old from Germany. He wowed everybody in the preliminaries of the men's jumping, finishing in second place with relative ease. Stefan Wild here at the Masters. An early shock to the crowd was Carl Robert, a former Masters Slalom champion, going down early at 38 off. Kicks it out around number two. And when you think of former champions, you think of Andy Mapple. Many times over as he won here, and he's been here a long time and had this memory. I think it still goes back to my very first Masters, I think, in 1982. Um, it was right after I won the World in 1981, and just, you know, when I was a kid, you know, you'd see pictures of this pavilion, you know, and just, I get that same feeling, I think, every time you come here. And just about every time he comes here, he wins eight solemn titles to his credit. He is the chief surgeon out here on the course. He can slice it and dice it with anybody. But wait, there's more. If he's not <laughs> slicing and dicing, his wife, Dina, is, of course. They are truly one of the great couples in water ski. And he's hoping to shred the course right now. He needs all six buoys at 38 off, looking good around number two. Gets on the front of the ski. Oh, and he stays on it too long, and the fin comes out. Big surprise, huge disappointment for Mapple, only two and a half at 38. Jeff Rogers has to be thinking about his run now and a possible Masters title. A very smooth and symmetrical skier, a left foot four skier for Rogers. Very quick on his offside, right there, buoy number four. Brings it around nicely, extends, accelerates, gets on the nose of ski, slows down, no slack rope, or very little slack rope. All six, he'll move on to 38 off. Well, my favorite memory after to be back in 92 when I tied the course record um, and still co-hold that with Andy and Mike Shalander. 
um, that's my favorite memory of the Masters. But each year, you know, I enjoy coming so much. 28-year-old Jeff Rogers from Greenwood, South Carolina, truly one of the great guys out here in the water skiing world. And by the way, a brand new papa. He just had a baby. And he really does enjoy his skiing quite enthusiastically. But right now, he's running a little late and doesn't like it, I'm sure. Only four buoys and 38 off. I don't think that's going to be enough for the afternoon. Well, here is 30-year-old Patrice Martin from France. He is skiing not only for the overall title, but can win the slalom title as well. His objective here is, of course, to make this run in at least three buoys in the next pass. He would like to be about six buoys ahead of Jarrett, who got three and 35 off right now. Patrice looking very good at 35 off, very quick turns. He's really improved this song a lot in the last couple of years, and that's one reason he was able to capture the title, the overall title, that is, last year. There is Wade Cox. If anybody has virtually dominated the slalom skiing world, it has been Wade Cox. We'll see him in just a moment. Here comes Patrice Martin. Being on a slalom ski with a boat going 36 miles an hour, the skier travels about 20 around the buoys, about 60 through the wakes, and he's barely hanging on. Comes into number four and stands up, can't get over to number five. You could almost see the fin slip out around number three. It catches, and he gets four slalom buoys. That puts him seven buoys ahead of Jarrett, and probably back in the lead, no doubt, in the lead now in the overall race. Well, looking to take the lead right now is Wade Cox. He has absolutely sizzled the course every time he has stepped foot out on the water so far this season. But he has never won on Robin Lake. On these waters, which demand everything from the skier, they've got to have the technique, they've got to have the focus. And we've seen already some great champions go down. One of them, Andy Mapple, out early, only two and a half and 38. Robert is out, he's a former champion. And right now in the lead, Jeff Rogers with four buoys at 38 off. Wade is looking to get any part of number five. He's down deep around number two. Comes into three, back on the ski, a little slow there. Around number four, can he get around number five? And he's got it. He's got the victory and he's gonna make the pass and Wade says good job to the boat driver but I don't know if he fully realizes that he has won this event his first ever slalom title here at the Masters oh I think he does now look at him he's a, he's a little bit excited congratulations to Wade Mass. I think he's scaring the fish here at Robin Lake. He'll come back at you, and here's a good look at the win for Wade Cox. He was fighting. The window of opportunity was there, and he crashed through the window. And once again, a look at the reaction when Wade Cox realizes that he is, in fact, the 1995 Slalom Champion here at the Masters. Now he has an opportunity to set a course record here. Coming at you at 39 and a half off, slides around number two, and that is all he will get. But once again, it does not take away from a terrific win for Wade Cox. The crowd's fired up, and certainly Wade is a tremendous effort on his part. He was aggressive, and that was the key not only for Wade this afternoon, but Christy Overton. Well, Wade Cox can put down with pride on his resume now a Masters champion in the slalom skiing event. I got three seconds here. And uh, if it wasn't Andy, it was Mike. Same thing with U.S. Open. It was either Andy or Carl won. And I got boned out of U.S. Open that I won. And uh, last year I was so close, and that's all I wanted. You know, I just, just let me have one, and the rest will be easy. There's a great look at the first Christy Overton for the women. At least I get to see this year. Coming up, those two will go head to head for the Joe Cash Trophy. In honor of the late, great Joe Cash, the first overall champion here at the Masters in 1959. And so Wade Cox, the winner of the men's slalom competition, will take on Christy Overton, the winner of the women's competition. Now, who's your money on? My money's on Wade. Well, then my money is on Christy. The adrenaline's flowing. He's just got an abundance of it left. I mean, it's surging through his muscles. He's ripping around number two, around number three. We got 38 feet off the 75-foot line here. No problem on four. Stretches, wait for five here. Oh, the slack rope, no problem. Oh! Uh, maybe he left the world. <laughs> Take a look again. I like my chances with Christy oh Overton at this Got point. Got on the rear of the ski there, and it kind of flared up on him. He did the wheelie. He did a little wheelie coming into six. Come on, Christy. If she gets through this entire pass, then she will pick up the Joe Cash Trophy. And Dan will pick up a little money for me. Right now, she's looking really good at 35 off. 
75 foot line and at six and let me get my rolling out. Thank you very much. I pick up the cash. Christy picks up the win. Wade takes a walk and we talk with our win. Wade was a little tired out there. And that's the best I felt. The last felt great and it was really nice. It's fun to go against Wade. We trained together for a long time. And there's a great look at the pavilion here at Robin Lake in all its splendor here in the sunshine. But you know, it didn't always look this good. It all began back in the 30s. Callaway family, dreaming of preserving the native plants in the area, reshaped and replanted the landscape to create a paradise of flowering vistas and blooming hillsides. The family dream continued with the birth of Robin Lake, originally a cotton field, soon to be the jewel of water skiing. The Callaway legacy continues with Bo Jr., the third generation of Callaways to carry on the tradition. My father started this place and, and I ran it a long time and now he's the president of Callaway Gardens, so this Bo is back. It's, it's great to be back. I, I grew up here, went to school here. This is where my family is, where my grandparents were. And it's great to be back here after a period of 20 years. With 14,000 acres, Callaway Gardens has truly become a destination point for all seasons. Well, Callaway Gardens has historically been a place that people come in the spring, in the summer, and fall, and now, you know, our busiest month of the year is December. And guess why? We've got a thing called Fantasy and Lights. It's a couple of million light bulbs put all around these lakes. And as you go, you go from scene of the toy soldiers uh, played to the tune of the Nutcracker Suite, and you go to the 12 Days of Christmas, and you go to the various fantasy kinds of things that kids like to see, and we have a Christmas village and nativity scenes and just things happening all the time. Really what we think of Callaway Gardens as a, as a place where people can learn about nature, about man's relationship with nature. And we have a wonderful course of education where we start children at very early ages and show them what nature is, show them what animals are here, show them the diversity of this particular part of the world, get them to love it as we do here. We have, um, gosh, a, a program called Nature Naturally, which goes to about a quarter million students every year in this area, uh, just telling what nature's about. And so we are an organization that believes in, in education to tell people what the relation of man to nature can really be and how it should be well done. You know, I've had the good fortune of going all around this country, and you'll be hard-pressed to find anywhere as beautiful as Callaway Gardens. This is 17-year-old Javier Julio. He was the overall winner in the Juniors Masters, the next great generation of Masters champions coming up. This is Brandy Hunt, 16 years old. She won the women's tricks, the slalom, and the jumping competition. She was our overall winner for the women. This is what I've trained my hardest for. Every day you go out and practice, and sometimes you want to be out there, sometimes you don't, but it seems like those days you really don't want to be out there, you ski your best, and it just makes you want to keep going, and so it's definitely worthwhile. One of the things I love about the Masters is its tradition. It has a long history of the best skiers, officials, and equipment. This boat I'm in is a classic, 1961. The best in the world right now is this ski nautique, the best driver, Les Todd, and the, my partner next to him. Yeah, okay, he's the best as well. And he's going to learn from Les about the new technology we find in tournament water ski boats. And this is exciting, Les. Yeah. This is speed control, and I understand it is going to completely eliminate human error on the part of the driver. No offense. Well, not completely, Dan. We do still have to steer this thing, but uh, the best thing that this speed control has is this consistency. It is so consistent, time after time after time, you know, giving the skier the same pull, the same speed throughout the course. So yeah. it's been a big help and takes a lot of pressure off us. And in a sport where the margin of error can be a tenth of a mile of an hour, this is going to help out a lot. Let's go ahead and check out how it works. Okie doke. Les, I noticed that just before you actually get to a speed, you punch a button down here on a numerical pad. What exactly is that? Well, this system down here, actually, we can run trick, slalom, or jump in it, and we tell it what it wants to do really before we start the event. So say for the women's slalom, we, uh, we tell we want to do for slalom, we punch in the four, which is for 34 miles an hour, uh, then it's ready to go, we bring the boat up to speed, we're in the course, and uh, we hit the green button, and off it goes. Dan, I am standing on top of the biggest and the baddest piece of equipment on Robin Lake. The ramp, the master's jump ramp. It's fast, it's steep, it's immovable. 
is an event that gets a lot of attention, particularly from the men's jumpers, because they'll be hitting this bad boy at about 70 miles an hour, if you can believe that. And that's about 10 to 20 Gs of force on the lower body, because this is a 15 degree incline. In order to have that kind of impact and an ultimate jump, they've got to be in the right position, sort of like this. Left shoulder down, legs almost straight, back straight, and if they assume that position by midpoint of the ramp, there'll be a slight crushing, a bending of the knees and the back, but not too far because they've only got one tenth of a second to get to the top with their legs extended straight, their back straight, which will explode them out into the air about 25 feet high, 200 feet across the lake, and on possibly to a master's title. And that would be one heavenly experience. Well, thank you, Wayne. Let's go ahead and take a look back at some of the action earlier today in Women's Jump, then. We begin with Tony Neville. And Tony showed the rest of the world the last couple of days that she's been working on her jumping nice edge to the base of the ramp and ended up kicking off 136 for her best run. They do get three jumps, and the best one, obviously, is the one that will count, like you had back in 1972, Where Wayne. are they digging these pictures up from? <laughs> that was you with your first world record there at the Masters back in 1972. That's Ronnie Barton, who many say will dominate this event for years to come. Ronnie flying over the ramp and will settle for a 134. That's her best jump in her second attempt. Solid round of jumping for her. However, it's a little solace because she failed to qualify in the overall due to a bad performance in tricks. However, right in the overall hunt is Philippa Roberts. And here's a look back at Philippa Roberts, her third and final jump. She needs a good one. And not bad, 130 feet, but keep in mind that Sherry Sloan who is close on her heels is a very powerful jumper. So is Brenda Nichols. Brenda Nichols is fairly new to the Masters. Out of North Carolina, here comes Brenda. One of the young, very talented skiers out there, gaining more and more experience as the years go by, opens up with a tremendous 138. Her personal mark set just a week earlier of 149. There's a good look from the reverse angle that's inside the boat. A great look at the pavilion and the crowd beyond. And so Brendan Nichols is our current leader. Her first jump, 138 feet. Now there's Sherry Sloan. She knows that if she can absolutely nail one, she might also nail down the overall title. Edging in, speed to the ramp, spring off the top of the ramp. That's a better jump. It's gonna end up being 140 feet, and that was her best for the day. And she remains the one to beat. However, Sherry Sloan is on the water next, and here's the way it shapes up. Sherry needs a 141 to win the jumping competition, a 146 to win the overall title. Patrice Martin is thinking about his opportunity to win the overall title on the men's side of things. So, Sherry Sloan will attack the ramp. A 141 wins the jumping competition, a 146, and she's the overall title winner. That is a great leap. Is it enough? A 144, that's enough to win the jumping title, but not the overall Masters champion. Tremendous explosion at the top of the ramp. You can see her legs just dead straight, arching over the skis. Great aerodynamic position, and that is just one fantastic jump. And we know what Sherry Sloan is thinking is she has one final jump for the overall Masters title. She already has the jump championship in hand. This is for the overall win. And she just got a little stretched out at the base of the jump. Couldn't get her full extension, nor did she have the speed. Jump champion this afternoon, but Philippa Roberts walks away with the overall. As is often the case at the Masters, we have another first. You're looking at the first British woman to win the overall at Callaway Gardens. Congratulations, Philippa. Thanks very much. Did you even think this was possible when you got the wild card invitation Thursday, I believe? Yeah, Thursday night, 10 o'clock, I heard. No, I was just really happy to be invited because I've never been invited Thank before, you, Dave, even though I've been in the top ten in the world for millions of years. And just to be here was great. So I didn't have any pressure. I just skied and I've enjoyed it. It's been great. Philippa Roberts is the overall champion, but this is how close Sherry Sloan came to winning that title. Two feet shy, she wins the jumping title, but she's short by two feet. It's an emotional day for the competitors. You made it a very exciting day for all the spectators. Tremendous, tremendous tournament for you. Thanks, Wayne. I uh, gave it my best. I sure wish that would have been a couple of feet further, but win some, you lose some. And now Jared Llewellyn has his eyes on winning. Men's jumping coming up. At Correct Craft, the customer commands a lot of respect. That customer needs bats, not hype. 
We prove every day that a really good product will sell itself, but only if the customer has all the information. We'll show you what we've got and help you compare and let you make the decision. Because once you get behind the wheel of a Nautique, the selling stops and the performance starts. Nautiques by Correct Wrap, the definition of quality. Call 1-800-346-2092. Welcome back to the Masters, where Patrice Martin's quest for a Masters title continues. This is the jumping competition, and this is technology helping out. New metering system is called Video Jump Metering. The skier lands on the screen, they mark it with the cursor, and the computer does the rest. And that is a lot easier. Here comes Patrice Martin, and he needs a great jump because keep in mind, Jarrett Llewellyn is a stronger jumper by far, and that is a terrific jump, a 187. Patrice collects himself nicely right at the base, stands up a little bit back so he doesn't get his full extension, but enough so it sends him 187. A great jump for him, and that means Jarrett is now going to have to jump 197 well within his capability. One final crack at that ramp for Patrice. That does not look as far. Nice jump, but not as far. 180, and so the stage is set for this man, Jared Llewellyn. He needs at least 197. If he does that, then he is our overall Masters champion. One last look at a terrific jump by Patrice Martin. Well, the stage is set, and the excitement continues to grow because we're seeing the overall come down to the jumping. And right now, Jerry Llewellyn hitting the six-foot ramp, sailing and soaring out there, well into the 190s, a 194, fantastic opening lead. And still three feet shy of where he needs to be to grab that overall title. The best thing about that opening jump, though, is it told him that his body position at the base of the ramp was exactly spot on. I mean, he got his left ski down, he stood up just at the right moment, and look at that elevation. So he might be disappointed, hey, I didn't win the overall on the first jump, but it really tells him he's on his way to a better jump. Well, he had problems with his second attempt. This is his third and final attempt. Patrice Martin shakes his head, does not think that he has it. Jarrett waits. It's official. The score is in on his third and final attempt. He comes up two feet shy. Two fierce fighters, and you guys have battled out for the overall the past several years. Congratulations, obviously, to this man, Patrice Martin, in this year, but I know you'll be back. Oh, definitely. Patrice is a tough competitor, you know. Every time we come into this turn, we know we're going to be going at it. And no one screws up in each event, so, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. And how does our overall champion feel? I mean, I'm happy to be back, and uh, I swim quite good, and I jump quite good, and uh, I can I show now that I can win a, an overall title without tricking good. That's right, and that was key for you. Congratulations. You're known for your tricking. I think you're going to be known as a Masters champion for another year. Congratulations. Thanks. That takes care of the overall title, but what about the jumping competition? It's still up for grabs. John Swanson had problems on his first two jump. That's his third and final one, and Wayne looks much better. Yeah, he really sticks that one. I mean, he pulled himself together, stood up just at the right moment, and nailed his spring. A 193 for John Swanson. He's coming off a bad accident, so hopefully he's happy with that. Carl Roberts, he has won this competition before. He, in fact, is the defending champion in the jumping event. Six foot two, 195 pounds. He gets in deep, rockets across, double cut, 70 miles an hour, stands up, not a quick snap of the legs, a resisting spring, but he carries so much speed, and that was a 192. A 192 with one jump left. That's Scotty Ellis. He's up next. But right now, the time belongs to Carlo Bears. Can he use it wisely? There's the jump, the lift, a little bit of a problem, but it looks a little better. Well, you know, it's deceptive because he slips out quite a bit to the crowd. He comes across the second way, trying to build speed, but he doesn't get his left shoulder down. The ski split slides out or rocks out. And, you know, frankly, I don't think it's as far. But you know what? I'm wrong. The and judges <laughs> show it to be a 195. And so Scotty Ellis knows the mark to beat, but that won't do it. That's his best jump, a 190. And so the stage is set for Sammy Duvall, our final competitor on the water. He needs to go better than 195. Bo knows that, and so does the rest. His first jump, 187. His second to fall, his last crack at the big jump. Does he do it? No. 
Carl Robert's wins. 192. Carl, amazing. I talked with you. I said, do you think it could hold up? You said, yes, it is true. How are you feeling right now? I feel really great. It was a real tough battle for me to get that distance out there today. And, you know, the conditions are just relevant. Your distance is relevant to the conditions. And uh, I gave him my all. And I was, it wasn't as far as I wanted, but it was as far as I think anyone could have gone today. Memories of the Masters. When we asked the Larsons who won, they said we did. We know that Corey won his eighth, Darren his second. And for Christy Overton, yes, she did it again. Sherry Sloan won her first ring. Carl's flight added to his collection. Philippa Roberts became the first doctor to win here. And Patrice Martin continues to dominate. And when Wade Cox said the Masters is the championship of the champions, well, who can forget his reaction? The Masters was brought to you by Overton's, the world's largest water sports dealer. And Nautique's by Correct Drive. Since 1925, the definition of quality. A promotional consideration has been provided by Callaway Gardens Resort. When you want to get away from it all, call Callaway. This has been a production of CPN Sports in association with ESPN.